be calling for violence. I don't know all the details of what went on there or what was happening, but uh, uh, I, I think if that is happening, if that is true, I think that just is a reflection once again that they're sort of panicking and they're insecure about what they believe in and how to present their case, and they're afraid they're, they're losing control. Couldn't that backfire on them to tase somebody when they ask Kerry a question or try to tase somebody when they ask Clinton a question? I mean, I mean that's getting pretty bold. Yeah, if they actually do that, it's still a little bit hard for me to believe uh, that we've gotten that far. But uh, usually they'll find another excuse, you know, that uh, they won't say they'll, that they've actually done this, uh, you know, for what they said. They'll probably come up and say, well, you know, he was uh, creating... A disturbance, you know, and disrupting yes. the meeting, and depending on the locality and, and what the situation is, uh, uh, I, I don't want to make a, a uh, blanket judgment on, yes. on on what they're doing. The Supreme Court uh, is in March going to hear uh, the argument for the Second Amendment, and the press is saying that it's not an individual right. And some are reporting that the Supreme Court may give a mixed verdict, but uh, but claim, okay, you have a Second Amendment, but we can restrict it by law. Your take on that? Well, that's interesting. That's the D.C. gun bill, yes, the sir. gun law. Uh, the first time I went into Congress in special election in 1976, within a month or two after I was elected, that law was passed, and, and Congress has jurisdiction over the city, and we have a process where we can overrule anything that they do. So I brought that uh, to the floor under special privilege, and uh, nobody wanted to deal with it. And I argued up and down that this was unconstitutional and it would lead to strict gun laws around the country. And it was ruled out of order for technical reasons just because leadership didn't want to hear and it. And you were right. They're now saying that if they rule in favor of the D.C. gun ban, it's going to be used nationwide. That's right. So I find it rather ironic it took this many years that it finally made it to the Supreme Court. But uh, it is going to be a dangerous um, ruling because we could get really hurt. But it would be pretty hard for me to understand how they could argue that the Second Amendment has nothing to do with our right to own a weapon. It was so clear in the minds of the founders that you had a right for own guns for self-defense, defense against your government. And they would have never thought that people wouldn't have guns to go Stay hunting. Stay there. we got a break. Ron Paul is our guest. Final segment with him. Be part of history. Don't wait on the sidelines and wish you wouldn't have gotten involved in Nevada or New Hampshire or Michigan or Iowa and other areas. Get involved now, ladies and gentlemen. I want to talk about the economy with Congressman Paul, but finishing up, if the Supreme Court gives some mixed thing of, well, you've got a right, but we can restrict it, that spin, which we've seen before from the lower courts, uh, will this cause a constitutional crisis? Can't Congress do things to overturn that? Uh, where do you see this going? Well, the Congress, the only tool the Congress has is to eliminate the jurisdiction if lower courts or, um, or states have certain laws to protect individuals. You can restrict uh, that from going into a federal court if they're going to, you know, undermine it. But, uh, of course, the ultimate test would have to be getting new Supreme Court justices. What about impeaching them, hauling them in before Congress? Well, you can do that, but that doesn't change the law. You know, oh, you mean impeach? Did you say impeach? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, you you can. Uh, that, of course, is not uh, done very often. And I, I think they do this for uh, other reasons than because there's a disagreement in the interpretation, although that is available and all. In a practical sense, I don't, I don't see that happening, to tell you the truth, although the tool is there. Is an attack of this level on the Second Amendment, though, not an attack right on the direct heart of the country? Well, of course, uh, but look at how many other things that they've attacked. You know, whether it's the First Amendment now already, you know, on all the laws that they pass on campaign financing and, and what have they done on property rights and the way they collect our taxes, what have they done to our money, what do they do, how do they go to war? You know, it's endless, but we don't, we don't really, if we, if we went to the impeachment process, I guess every president, every member of Congress nearly, and uh, probably every member of the courts should have been impeached one time or another. So we have to change people's attitude and have a consensus and go forward. 
Congressman, two final questions. Uh, the economy, U.S. economic gloom brings new dollar low, gold surges again. It seems like every perfect storm, everything you've warned about for 30 years now happening. Your take on the economy, top, uh, you know, bankers are saying we could have a global recession or depression. Your analysis, and A, what do you think is going to happen? B, what should we do now to pull out of this? Well, it's not going to be easy to pull out of it. I think we're in bad, bad shape, worse shape than we were in the 70s when, uh, you know, the dollar nearly collapsed uh, and it was rescued with 21% interest rates. I think our uh, productivity in this country is way down. Uh, our savings is way down. The dollar is more vulnerable than ever. I think we're in for a weaker dollar, more inflation, higher interest rates, and a much weaker economy. And uh, we're going to have to pay for living beyond our means. And a lot of people's standard of living is going down. 75% of the American people say now they're having economic problems. And yet our government keeps telling us there's no inflation, no problems, everybody's employed. And yet the people are hurting, and it's mainly because their purchasing power is being lost. It's are the you, dollar value that is really the big issue. Are you worried about uh, this triggering a credit crisis in credit cards and then even in derivatives? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the vulnerability. And, of course, when you have... Uh, economic chaos, uh, then you have political chaos, and once again, if you have a 9-11 incident or something like that, they use that to do the things that they had planned all along. So if we have more economic chaos, there will be individuals that say, well, we need more government, not less government. That is our greatest threat. And as you said, this is the key time. Will we go into greater liberty or greater tyranny? That's why the fight is so important now. How do we, the individuals listening, help the campaign? The most important thing is to support the campaign by joining it, uh, sending money, then all, and then doing things that you can do in the most creative manner possible, and that is finding friends and allies in the special states that are early. They have to get registered. They have to be available. They have to go to these caucuses and make sure they vote because the showings in the early primaries will make or break the whole campaign. Congressman, we're all praying for you. We're all behind you. You have hit the zeitgeist. Have a great Thanksgiving with your family. Thank you very much. God bless. There goes Congressman Ron Paul, the dark horse champion of liberty.